Welcome everybody, welcome those who are with us uh, and with us online, uh, thanks so much for tuning in and being part of the service here today and welcome to Christmas at Elam, it is the start of December and we're into the Christmas uh, season, there's so many great opportunities to invite people to come along and be part of Christmas with us and just share the love of God with our community, so I want to encourage you to do that, uh, what, you know I love, I really love Christmas, I, I am just all about it, um, as soon as we can get the decorations up, I'm into it, as soon as the music can play, I'm, on, I'm all over it, like I love it. One of my favorite things about Christmas is the Christmas Day afternoon nap. You know, with me on that? Like you come, you get up early, you do presents with the kids, you come along to church, you go home, you have a big feed with your family, and then about two, three o'clock, things start to, the plane starts to land a little bit, doesn't it? Find yourself on that nice comfy sofa, next thing you know, you're in a food coma, I, as I've gotten older, one of my many talents is the afternoon nap. I'm, I'm, I'm amazing at the afternoon nap. I'm like an expert at it. It's like the gift of the Lord. Prophets, pastors, evangelists, apostles, teachers, afternoon nappers. That's in the scriptures right there. Don't look it up. It won't be there. I love an afternoon nap. And, I'm, I, and um, I'm, I love the Christmas Day afternoon nap, but I love an ordinary afternoon nap too. And it's funny when you have an afternoon nap. It's, it's when you wake up from an afternoon nap, it's like waking up from another dimension. You want to notice that? It's like you wake up different on an afternoon nap. In the morning, you wake up, you're like, oh, afternoon nap, you're like, <laughs> and you think to yourself, did I sleep for 20 minutes or 20 years? Like, I'm not, I'm not sure. Like, I, 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 I don't quite know where I am, who I am, or what I am. It takes me a few minutes to figure that out. And the other thing I noticed about afternoon naps is you have gnarly dreams. Like dreams take on a whole different reality when you have an afternoon nap. And you know, I've been walking with Jesus for over 20 years and there's been a number of times along that journey where God has actually spoken to me through dreams. Like I've had a dream, like a prophetic dream and God has spoken really clearly to me about what he wants me to do for a particular season or he's given me insight into a particular situation. It's been pretty amazing. And when I read through the nativity story again, I realized that Joseph, the father, the adoptive father of Jesus, the husband of Mary, he also had dreams. And I realized, man, it's not just the Joseph from the Old Testament that dreamed, this Joseph dreamed too. And that's actually the title of my message because I couldn't think of anything better. This Joseph dreamed too. <laughs> Be blessed. Merry Christmas. And what you discover in the nativity story is that God spoke to Joseph four times through four different dreams. And he gives, uh, God gives Joseph some clear instruction for what God is asking him to do, where he wants him to go, some action that he wants him to take. And I wanna just take a few minutes this morning as we begin this Christmas series by exploring those dreams and what God said to him. And I wonder today if God might be saying the same thing to you and to me. Should we go on a journey? Are you with me, church? Merry Christmas. <laughs> First thing God says to him is this. God says to him, stay. His first instruction is stay. Matthew 1 verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus took place in this way when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man uh, and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So she will bear a son, and you should call him Jesus, for he will save the people from his sins. God says to Joseph, Joseph, stay. You want to leave. You want to go. Like, you want to divorce Mary. You've got it in your heart to do that. And I know this is a complicated situation, but God says to Joseph, I want you to stay because there is a bigger plan at play here. In fact, God is literally in this. It's amazing. Uh, Bex and I have two dogs. They are the fifth and sixth members of our family. Some would argue the most loved. And uh, they're, they're, I, I love dogs. I'm a real dog person. So uh, one of them is a one-eyed idiot. Um, it literally, he has one eye. It does, it's not just that he just literally has one eye. And the other one is the most needy dog you'll ever meet in your life. Her love language is physical touch, which basically means you gotta touch her all the time. So I've been trying to train these dogs. So, you know, train them to sit, lie down, don't bark, all those kinds of things. And I've recently been trying to teach them to stay. Now, the one-eyed idiot is a lost cause. 
he's gone. But the other one, like she's got, she can, I can work with her a little bit. But the thing with trying to get these dogs to stay is I'm like, okay, sit, stay. Well, I want you to stay where you are and I'm going to go somewhere else and I don't want you to move. The trouble is they don't want to stay where I put them to stay. They want to go somewhere else. They're like, I know you want me to stay here, but I, I want to go and just be free to roam and do whatever I want to do, you know? And, and aren't we the same? When God says to us, stay, often we're like, I don't want to stay here. I want to go somewhere else. When God says, stay, we'd rather be somewhere else. And, and we go through difficulty. We go through challenging seasons in our life. We go through things that we don't want to go through. And often we're like, God, take me out of this situation. And God's like, stay. There's a bigger plan at play than you can see. There's a bigger plan at play in this than you can realize. See, the plan of God is not to remove you from every difficult situation. That's not the plan of God. And God responds to Joseph, and he's like, Joseph, I know you want to leave right now, but I want you to stay because there is a bigger plan at play. And I know this is complex, and I know this is going to be difficult for you, and I know you've got some challenges ahead with this. Your fiancé, who you're not married to, is now pregnant by the Holy Spirit. You've got you to you communicate that to the world. Good luck. And, and you've got all this complexity and all this, th th this difficulty now that you've got to work through. But I want you to understand, in the difficulty, as you journey through that, I want you to know I'm in it, I'm with you, and there is a much greater plan at work in this moment. See, it's not always easy to follow Jesus, is it? It's not always easy to follow God. It's not always easy to live for Him. And, be, and it's not always the most comfortable thing to go through. But I want to tell you, if God is calling you to stay, it's because He has a much bigger picture than you can understand. And He's got a purpose to outwork for you in the midst of the difficulty. You know, uh, we've had so many people uh, this year give their lives to Jesus in our services. Like across our campuses, we've had well over a thousand people say yes to following Jesus this year. It's been, the, it's been absolutely amazing. Week after week, you know, most Sundays we're getting over 20 people here in this campus putting their hand up saying yes to Jesus, making a commitment to follow Him. It's just been the most amazing thing. And as I was writing this message, I really felt led to speak to some of those people because some of you recently said yes to Jesus and things got harder. Some of you recently said yes to Jesus and it got more difficult. You're like, I thought He was supposed to make it better. But now it's harder and life is more challenging and it's more complex. I want to encourage you because the word of the Lord for you today is stay. Stay in prayer. Stay in the word. Stay in fellowship. Stay in obedience. Stay in surrender. Stay in faith. My friends, today, where are you wanting to go but God is saying stay? Where in your life is God saying there is a purpose in the midst of the difficulty that you want to run from? And if you just stay, you'll see God's miraculous power at work in a way you never imagined. Where is it that you want to go, but God is saying, stay? The second thing God says to Joseph, he says, go, stay, now go. Matthew 2 verse 13. Now when they, when they departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream saying, rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child and destroy him. So he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt. God says to Joseph, it's now time to go. Uh, the great privilege of my life is that I get to be a pastor. Like it is honestly, it's some, like the greatest joy of Bex in my life to be pastors and to be able to give our lives to this and to serve such an amazing church and do life with these you amazing people and walk a journey with you. It, honestly, it's such a gift to us. And the fact that we get to do this full-time, like this is our, our full-time gig, and actually this is the only full-time job I've ever had in my life, is being a pastor. That's all I've ever done. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, such an honor to do it. And because, you know, Sunday is like a big day for us, we you know, preaching all day, and it's just, you know, it's, it's long and it's hectic. So, like, we have different days off. So my days off are normally Saturday and Monday. I've split days off. So Saturday and Monday. Sunday's big, uh, so I have a day off on Monday. And uh, for years, Bex wasn't full-time in ministry. But when she came on full-time staff and into ministry, she, I was like, great, we can have a day off together. This is going to be awesome. Like, we can, uh, uh, we, we can hang out together. We can do stuff. It's going to be great. Like, the kids will be at school. And then she decides she wants to have her day off on Friday. So I was like, okay, I'll shift my day off to Friday. So I shifted my day off to Friday. After three weeks, she came to me and she said, babe, I love you, but you have to go away. <laughs> it's a true story. She sat me down. 
She said, I love you, but you have to go. You cannot be in my day off anymore. <laughs> this is my day off, and I need some space. I was thinking to myself, what? I don't understand. It's not going to be good for me or you if you stay, so I need you to go. Friends, sometimes the word of the Lord is go. <laughs> it's interesting to me that often we want to go when God says stay, and we want to stay when God says go. And God says to Joseph, this place that you're in is no longer safe for you. This place you're in is now a place that's going to do harm to you. I know it's comfortable. I know it's where you've got your home. I know it's where you've made a home. But it's no longer good for you to be here, so you need to go. So church, I want to tell you, when staying in something will hurt you, it's time to go. You have to get out. You can't stay there anymore. Even though it's comfortable and you know it and it's familiar, and even though you, you may have built a little bit of a life for you in, in that situation, I don't think you quite understand what I'm saying here. I, I know some of you have been hurt by people and maybe even hurt by the church, but you can't stay in bitterness anymore. You have to go. Because that place is going to harm you. Staying there is going to hurt you. Staying there is not for your betterment, it's to your detriment. So you can't stay in bitter, bitterness anymore. It's time to go. Some of you, I know it's comfortable being where you are and in the situation you're in, but if God has called you out to do something for Him or to step out for Him, you can't stay comfortable anymore. You have to go. I know that person wronged you and it hurt and it was bad and it wasn't right, but you can't stay in unforgiveness anymore. It's time to go. It's time to go. Friend, get out of that wrong relationship. Get out of addiction. Get out of that sinful lifestyle. Gossip, pride, get out of selfishness, get out of anger. All of these things, although maybe comfortable for you and although maybe you've made a home with them, like I know how to do bitterness and I know how to do unforgiveness and I know how to do pride and I know how to do comfort in that sin. It's not gonna be a place that brings you life. So you gotta go. Don't stay comfortable if God is telling you go. Here's a question, friends. Where in your life is God saying go? Where is, where is it in your life that the Lord would say to you, you can't stay there anymore in that? It's no longer bringing you life. You need to go. And then the last thing that God says to Joseph, he says, go back. Stay, go, go back. It's very confusing. Matthew 2, verse 19 says this. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to to appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt saying, rise, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. And when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there and being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and lived in a city called Nazareth so, so that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled, that he would be called a Nazarene. The Lord spoke to Joseph and he says, Joseph, go back to Israel. Go back to Israel. Get up now. It's time to go back. So God is saying to him, hey, hey uh, Joseph, you know that place that became a place of pain and loss and hardship? You know that place that became a place of death and destruction and that place that you had to get out from? Now I want you to go back because that's going to become a place of blessing and purpose. Even more than that, that's going to be a place of prophetic fulfillment of the purpose and plan of God for the hope of humanity. Wow. Ben, you guys can come and join me. I don't know if you've discovered this, but I've discovered that every difficult thing I walk through turns around to become a place of ministry for me, for someone else. Everything. I don't know if you've noticed that. Like you go through something really difficult and you come out the other side and next thing you know, you've got people knocking on your door who are going through the exact same thing. And you're like, how did you know? I know you've seen it, I've seen it, where you go through something really even traumatic and difficult. Like, man, I don't ever wanna go back there. And then God's like, go back. Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn that thing around, that place that was a place of destruction and death and hardship is actually going to be a place of purpose. I remember 
and you guys know my story. I remember, you know, the, almost the day I started to kind of like get breakthrough from going through depression and anxiety, I, was, I started getting phone calls from people I hadn't talked to in 20 years who called me out of the blue going, hey, now I'm struggling with this. I just, I just thought I, I need to talk to somebody. And so I called you. Like kids from youth ministry that when we were youth pastors back in like the early 2000s, people are like 30 years old now calling me. I, I don't know who asked the call. I'm like, brother, I've been there. Let, let, me, let me walk the journey with you now. It's amazing how God takes the broken parts of our lives and brings the full circle moment that we come back to and the place of brokenness actually becomes a place of blessing. And as I talk with many, many people, it is fascinating to me how God takes your brokenness and your difficulty and the stuff that you got out of and brings it around that you now go back to to be a blessing for somebody else and to minister to somebody else. It's God fulfilling His promise in Romans 8 where He says He causes all things to work together for good for those who love God and accord according to His purposes. God will take even the messed up broken situations and He'll bring good out of it. Don't be surprised, my friends. Don't be surprised when God brings blessing out of the brokenness. Don't be surprised when God takes the mess of your life and makes it the ministry of your life. God chose the mess of the manger to reveal His majesty. Don't be surprised when the tests you go through become your testimony. Don't be surprised when the pain becomes a place of purpose for your life. Don't be surprised when that, that, that hardship you go through becomes a place of hope for other people. So friend, maybe God is saying to you, like Joseph, go back. Go back, because I want to turn that place around. I want to cause that to become a place. I know you ran from it. I know it wasn't good and safe for you there, but now you've overcome and you can come back and you can have a place of ministry and blessing there. Maybe some of you have been through hardship. Some of you have been divorced. And you're like, oh man, what could, I'm so broken. Go back and help those who are in broken marriages. Some of you, you've been addicts. Go back and help the addicted. Some of you have been depressed. Go, help, go back and help the depressed. Some of you have been through major loss. Go back and help the brokenhearted and the grieving. Some of you have been prodigals. You walked away from the Lord and you came back. Go back and help the lost. Go back, go back. Go back. God says to Joseph, Joseph, go back. And my question to you today is this. Where in your life is God saying, go back? Where in your life is God saying, I want to take that thing that was painful and hard and I want to cause it to be a place of blessing for somebody else who's going through the exact same thing that you went through. Perhaps like Joseph, God is asking you to discover His purpose in the broken bits of your life. Christmas is the, is the miracle of Emmanuel, God with us. He's with us. And I wonder how God might be leading you this Christmas season. Maybe He's saying, stay. In that broken thing, in that hard thing, in that difficulty, stay. Discover God's purpose in the midst of it. That He's in it. He's gonna journey you through it. Maybe He's telling you to go, like there's something in your life, you just go, it's not life there anymore. It's not right for you to continue to stay in that place, even though it might be comfy. Time to go, time to go. Or maybe he's saying, go back. Maybe he's speaking to you saying, hey, I want, to, I want to take that thing that was broken and I want to make it a place of blessing. God with us. I believe God wants to lead us every single day. He's Emmanuel, God with us. His voice to lead us in everything and every, everywhere we go and everything we do. And I'd love to pray for us this morning, church. Can we just bow our heads? Close our eyes for a moment. Stay. Go. Go back. Father, I thank you for your word. What a gift. I thank you for the gift of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. And Father, I pray that we would be a church that hears your voice and doesn't just hear it but listens and obeys that takes the steps you're asking us to take Lord if there's any in this room today that you are saying stay look we're just praying God take me out of this get me get me out of this situation or this thing and maybe you're saying stay Lord help us to see your plan your purpose in the midst of the difficulty and help us to work through the complexity that we might grow and learn and 
discover your power in the midst of all that. Lord, I pray for those in this room, you're, you're saying it's time to go. Lord, give us the courage to leave the comfortable and the familiar if it's no longer bringing life. That we might step into all that you have for us. And God, I pray that if any of us, well, you're saying go back. We've been running from that place of brokenness in our lives. Maybe today, Lord, you're asking us to go back to make that place of brokenness a place of blessing and ministry for somebody else. So Lord, I pray, help us, lead us. As we step into this Christmas season, we thank you that you are Emmanuel, God with us. I pray you'd lead us into all you have for us today. I wanna pray one more prayer, just while we eyes closed and every head bowed. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, maybe you've never made a decision to follow him, or maybe you'd be honest with me and you'd say, Steve, my life is not right with God today. Maybe you've walked with him before, but you've walked away. Maybe you're a prodigal. Maybe you are here today because you just know, man, I've got to get my life right with God. I'm not right with Him. Friends, I want to tell you, God loves you. God made you. God has a wonderful plan for your life. We all mess up. We all sin. We all fall short of God's standard. And our sin, it separates us from God. And the payment that's due for our sin is death. And God in His grace sent His own Son, Jesus. That's what we're celebrating here at Christmas. He sent His own Son, Jesus. When He died on that cross, He paid the debt that you and I would do, took upon Himself the sin of the world. He conquered death in the grave and He rose again to new life and He extends to you and I today forgiveness, grace, forgiveness for all of your sin or your wrong, a new life that begins right here, right now. It's called being born again by the Spirit of God. God will make you brand new from the inside out. You get to walk into the plans that God has for your life. God has a plan and a purpose for you, friend. And then there's this great promise of eternity in heaven with Him. And if you're here and you're not right with God, but you wanna be, I wanna invite you to pray a very simple prayer with me. I'll pray this out loud. You just pray it with me in your heart. But when you pray it, I want you to mean it with everything you got. Online, you can join in as well. This is your prayer. You just pray it in your heart as I pray out loud. Say these words. Say, God, today, I give my life to you. I know I've sinned and I know I've messed up, but I believe that Jesus, you died for me. So right now, I ask you to forgive me of all of my wrongs. I receive your free gift of grace. And I turn from my old way and I turn to you. I ask you to come in and be the Lord of my life today. I choose from this moment to follow you and to live for you. Would you be my Lord? Would you be my Savior today? In Jesus' name. Just if your eyes still closed and your head bowed, if you prayed that prayer, I wanna encourage you to do something really brave for me. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count to three. When I get to three, what I want you to do if you pray that prayer either for the very first time or you're getting your life right with God today, I want you to be really brave. When I get to three, I want you to put your hand up nice and high. And online, there's a button coming up that says, I raise my hand. Now, I'm not doing that to stand you up or anything. All I'm gonna do is I'll see you, acknowledge you. You can put your hand straight back down. What I'm asking you to do is to take a small step of faith. Put a little bit of action to your decision. Are you ready? On the count of three. Be bold, be brave. One, two, three. Hands going up nice and high right now saying, Steve, that's me, that's me, that's me. Thank you, God bless you, God bless you. Online, we see you too. God bless you to my right, but to my left. Thank you, brother, I see you. Thank you, thank you. Amazing. Amazing. God bless you. Father, we thank you so much for the work you're doing in this house. We thank you for all those people who just said yes to you. We thank you for lives transformed and changed. And God, we pray that they would truly know the full, free and abundant life you came to give them. Lord, we bless them today as a church and we rejoice with heaven today. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, church, let's put our hands together for those people. It's amazing.